Hi, I'm Natasha Trethewey. In my work, I've always been concerned with the intersections between personal and public history, our national collective memory with its omissions, erasures, our cultural amnesia, and the enduring need for justice for all. I'm gonna read a poem called Quotidian that begins with an epigraph from Justice Hugo Black writing in 1964. It reads, no right is more precious in a free country than that of having a voice in the election of those who make the laws under which as good citizens, we must live. Other rights, even the most basic, are illusory if the right to vote is undermined. Quotidian. Sometimes she wrote about the weather, how hot it was, or yet another lightning storm gone as quick as it came. In the catalog of her days, a dress she was sewing, car trouble, payday, laced with declarations of love to the man who would become my father. Her body bright with desire, a threshold I would soon cross into being. Two years before loving will make their love legal. My mother writes about marrying despite an unjust law. And because it is 1965, Mississippi in turmoil, she writes about a cross burned at the church next door, interracial outings at the beach, and being followed by police. All of it side by side in her letters, tidy script. Reading them, I can't help thinking how ordinary it seems injustice, mundane as a trip to the store for bread. And I know this is about what has always existed side by side in this country. That summer, my grandmother brought the movement home. It tells the story in pictures and it is beautiful, my mother wrote, adding, I think you know the way I'm using the word. On the cover, a black protester caught in a cop's chokehold, his mouth open to shout or gasp for air. Inside, pictures I could not bear to look at as a child, a man tied to a scaffold, his body burned blacker, the fire still smoldering beneath him. Two boys hanged from a tree above the smiling white faces of the revelers turned back toward the camera. A young couple holding hands, ordinary as any night out on a date. Now I think of my mother in love and writing love letters cataloging her days, those terrible, beautiful pictures on the table next to the crochet lace doily and crystal bowl my grandmother kept for candy, butterscotch in cellophane wrappers, bright and shiny as gold. It is July 20th, 1965, two months before my parents will break the law to be married. And my mother, who's just turned 21, signs off her rights basic as any other citizens. Have to run, she wrote. Got to get downtown to register to vote. <laughs>